Hi students, thanks for joining for this reading lesson to follow along with the sixth week of our distance English learning. Um, if you are not a part of my distance English class, no problem at all. Follow along while we are reading. Make sure to write down any new vocabulary in your notebook. Always, always leave me questions in the comments under the video. Um, put the vocabulary words that are new for you into context, and I can give you some feedback on your sentences. So let's jump right into our reading for the morning packet, week six. This reading is titled, In Seattle, the number of people living in a car has doubled since 2017. And this article is about two years old. It's from September 5th, 2018. In the city of Seattle, more people than ever before are living in their car. Since just last year, the number has almost doubled. Around 25% of Seattle's homeless population now lives in a vehicle. The problem isn't unique to Seattle, however. There's been an explosion of vehicular homelessness in many major cities, from Los Angeles to San Francisco to Portland, Oregon. The problem is biggest on the West Coast, where rents have risen very quickly in recent years. The number of homeless people who don't live in shelters is up by 20,000 from 2017. The rise of people sleeping in their cars presents unique challenges, law professor Sarah Rankin says. Rankin specializes in the rights of the homeless. Are they able to sleep, eat, poop, and breathe safely? We have to start asking what needs to be done, says Rankin. Laws against living in cars. Some cities have started so-called safe parking programs to help people who are living in their vehicles. Meanwhile, other cities are making the problem worse by treating such people like criminals. Under Los Angeles law, it is illegal to use a car as shelter on most city streets. The law was eased last year but only for 10% of the city's streets. Several cities in Washington have criminalized vehicular homelessness, including Aberdeen, Tacoma, and Longview, according to Rankin. Seattle doesn't directly outlaw vehicle residency, but the city does have 20 vehicle-related laws. Together, these laws make life difficult for residents who live in their cars. A man who was living in his truck sued Seattle after the truck was seized by the city. The city said it would put the truck up for sale if he didn't pay to get it back. Earlier this year, a judge sided with the man. The judge ruled that because the truck was used as a home, it could not be seized and sold by the government. As vehicular homelessness continues to climb, some people are urging cities to develop safe parking programs under such programs, certain lots are set aside for people living out of their cars. Seattle's program was an expensive failure. Seattle did briefly have a safe parking program. However, experts say it was an example of how not to run one. Seattle's program was launched in June 2016. Just six months later, the city declared it an expensive failure and ended it, largely because people weren't being rehoused Yet, the city had been doing little to help people find more permanent housing. City officials didn't sit down with any experts in homelessness, says Rankin. They had no plan. Unfortunately, Rankin says, the program's failure has made it hard to convince local officials to try again. Rankin says two cities do have well-designed safe parking programs that could serve as a model for other cities. One is San Diego, and the other is Santa Barbara, California. Teresa Smith runs Dreams for Change, an organization that helps San Diego's homeless. Eight years ago, she began seeing a wave of newly homeless people, many of whom were living in their cars. The right way to run a safe parking program. In 2010, Dreams for Change opened a lot for people to safely park the cars they were living in. It also provided them with a case manager who helped them find long-term housing. 
Since then, the program has expanded to three lots, each of which serves between 30 and 60 cars. The lots provide spots to cook simple meals and charge electronics. Smith says that residents often hang out and kids play together. Santa Barbara's Safe Parking Program has been around for more than 10 years. It is run by New Beginnings Counseling Center. Like San Diego's program, Santa Barbara's also uses case managers to help people find permanent housing. Unlike San Diego, however, the lots in Santa Barbara are much smaller. Each lot only serves a few cars. It's more private for people this way, program coordinator Cassie Roach says. Neighbors are less likely to stare and make those facing homelessness feel uncomfortable. Organizations helping the homeless say safe parking programs are a necessity. However, they also stress that the programs are not enough. While the programs may help some people, they don't solve the larger problem, the lack of affordable housing across the country. The cost of housing is continually rising, but people's wages are not keeping up, says Roach. People are making a living, but it's just not enough. How was this story for you? Did you find new vocabulary? Leave me a comment under the video, put the new vocabulary into sentences, and leave for feedback when I read your sentence. Until next time, students. Bye.